Hello, welcome to the video on Kramer's Rule. This is our third example set, example set C. And before we get going here, it's really important that you have watched the lesson and have also done um, the other previous example set, the other worksheets, example set A and B. Okay. All right, so as we just have been discussing that, Kramer's Rule is a way to solve linear systems. All right, so far we've been doing two by two systems, but you can also apply Kramer's Rule to solve uh, three by threes, i.e. three variables. Okay. The key here is that you need to um, know how to calculate the determinant of a three by three um, uh, matrix. All right. So if you don't know how to do that, you need to go back and review how to do that. There's basically two ways, and that's going to be the diagonal method and the expanding method. So let's go ahead and start. So the first thing you do, I'm just I, there's so many calculations here. I'm just I've kind of already pre-done it in this video, but um, you should be able to you know get the exact same answers as I am. If not, you're having trouble probably um, trouble calculating the determinants of these three by three. So the first thing we need to do is we calculate the determinant using the coefficients of uh, of the variables. Okay, now you notice we have x, y, and z. Everything is lined up in, in its proper column. So we, here we have negative 1, negative 2, 1. So you can see that's our first column. We have 4, 1, negative 1. Our second, excuse me, second row. Here we have 2, negative 3, negative 1. And it's our last row. So this sets up our first determinant. This is going to be our denominator uh, determinant. So we only have to calculate this once. All right. So when you see here, I'm actually using the diagonal method. You see how I set it up, and I don't want to get into it because this is a lot of uh, this is a lesson in and of itself. But I'm using the diagonal method. You can use the expanding by minors method if you like. I just find the um, diagonal method much easier. When everything's said and done, I get negative 14 as uh, my answer. Okay, so let's go ahead and keep that in mind at negative 14. Let's move down. Now here, just as we did with the two by two systems, okay, when we want to solve for a particular variable, what we need to do is replace the, that variable's coefficients with the constants here. Okay, this is why it's really important that you understand how to use Kramer's rule with two by two systems. So let's go ahead and replace this negative 1, 4, and 2. We're going to replace it with 7, negative 21, and negative 7. So you can see how that's all set up. And then the rest of our coefficients are the same. The y's haven't changed, and neither have the z's. All right? So negative 14 is our denominator determinant, and we already figured that out. Okay? So we're going to keep that throughout the, uh, the rest of uh, this procedure. So why don't you take a moment and calculate the determinant of the numerator here. Okay? I have the answer below, but it's really important that you know how to do that. So you know, give yourself some time. These sometimes take a good five minutes to do, and it's, uh, it's nice if you have a calculator to help you through these calculations. Okay, so let's go ahead and see what I got. Here it is. I set it up using the diagonal method. You can see my work. And when everything is said and done, I got a positive 70. All right, so we're solving for x. So that numerator determinant was a positive 70. Our denominator was already negative 14. That was our first determinant we calculated. So 70 divided by negative 14 is negative 5. So, so far we have x is equal to negative 5. All right. So hopefully you're getting the hang of this. Let's go on and set this up for y. Okay, you see here I'm already, um, I've already uh, set this particular determinant up. I replaced the y column, this negative 2, 1, negative 3. Notice I replaced it with the constants. All right. So here the x's are the same and the z's, the z's are the same. So the negative 14. Let's go ahead and see if you can calculate the determinant. And if you can calculate the determinant, there's no, absolutely no reason why you, can, uh, you can't get the correct answer. All right, so give yourself time. This particular problem here, uh, it would probably take, I would say, probably a good 10 minutes to do without rushing it. So, you know, no reason to, uh, you know, 
but go so fast you're going to make errors. Okay, so once again, check your work here. I got a positive 14, and here, uh, once again, I did this by using a diagonal method of finding um, these 3 by 3 determinants. So you can see here, you can pause the video and you can you know review what I did here or go back and watch the lesson on 3 by 3s But you should have got a positive 14. And you can see here now that the determinant is a positive 14. I'm going to divide it by that negative 14 that we found out. That was our very first determinant. So 14 divided by negative 14 is negative 1. All right, so y now is equal to negative 1. So all we need to do is solve for z, and we're going to do it the exact same way. Now, why don't you take a moment before I actually show you how to set it up. Let's see if you can do it yourself. All right, so go ahead and write that out for z. Okay, so here it is. You're going to replace the z numbers, the z coefficients, with 7, negative 21, and negative 7. So it looks like that. Okay, that's what you should, should have set up. And if you did, good job. Now what you need to do is go ahead and follow through and calculate that determinant. You may want to pause the video, see if you get it, see if you get it right. Okay, so once again, the diagonal method and everything said and done, you get a zero. So it's going to be zero divided by negative 14, which of course is going to be zero. It's really easy. So z is equal to zero. All right, so our solution set, recall, our first one was negative 5, um, which was x is equal to negative 5. We had y equal to negative 1, and we had z equal to 0, so we write it as an ordered triple, okay? And there you go. All right, so Kramer's rule is a excellent way to, to solve uh, um, any linear system. You know, it's just another tool. Some of you might want to, you know, use uh, row operations or linear uh, combination, substitution method, but it's another tool and some of you may really like this now you have a, even a better way to solve these systems once again if you made some mistakes here two things one chances are you need to go back and practice your uh, determinants calculating determinants or two you're making some sort of arithmetic or uh, common little you know we guy like to call them like silly mistakes or adding things wrong and that just goes with experience right neater and take your time okay all right, so good luck to you and hope to see you soon.